There's nothing in that. I wasn't a videographer if I didn't have a cliche lens mug. Shout out to my barber, he got it for me. For me. Anyway, that's not why you're here today. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top 10 ways you can save money on your wedding. My name is Damien Armstrong from North Park Films. I do wedding videography and I wanted to kind of share some of my insight when it comes to saving money on your wedding and just kind of give back to my brides. First thing I'm gonna talk about is DIY certain things. Now, I even spoke to a photographer friend of mine and even she was saying like, there's certain things you don't wanna cheap out on, but save money where you can. So where you can save money um, are things like favors. So when you guys are giving out favors at the end of the night for them to take home from your wedding. It's a lot cheaper if you do it yourself. Uh, an example I could give you is I had a bride and groom who they got these little bottles um, and inside the bottles were maple syrup. And then they had a little tag that wrapped around it that said something about isn't love sweet. And then it kind of had the date of their wedding and then their name. So that's something that you could do yourself. And honestly, I still got those in my car and every now and then when I want a little something sweet, I just it a little bit and it's, it's cool. So when it comes to the favors, a good place to look at to buy stuff like this that you can kind of get creative with, go to Michael's um, and art stores uh, just to get an idea of what you could set up. Try to match it to like the overall theme of your wedding. So if you're having a more woodsy type um, outdoor wedding, you can kind of match it to that. If you're having more of a ballroom wedding, you can match it to that as well so that it, it kind of accents the uh, centerpiece in the middle of the table. So if you if you can think about this all, uh, you can kind of get an idea of what you want to do with the favors. Another thing I would check is Pinterest. Uh, Pinterest will give you a lot, a lot of ideas. Type in DIY wedding favors and you'll start to kind of brainstorm, get an idea on how you could set something up that matches your wedding theme and is still relatively inexpensive that you can do. Next thing I want to talk about when it comes to DIY stuff is custom labels. So every time someone comes to their table, you're always going to, they're always going to sit down and their name tag is going to be there. Um, if you get, if you hire someone to do that, it's going to be a lot more expensive. You can do it yourself. If you go to a print shop and you kind of get that figured out, you can kind of get a good quote and a good idea of how much it would cost. I mean, you can make it very simple. Um, the one thing I would focus on is just what font you're going to use. Once again, if you're doing a ballroom wedding, try to get something a little bit more elegant. If you're doing a more outdoor wedding, try to get something that feels a little bit more authentic to the branding of your wedding. So everything is kind of cohesive and just matches. The last thing I'm going to talk about when it comes to DIY certain things is custom centerpieces. If you go to Michael's, they have like these little glass centerpieces and then you can do something inside of it. When it comes to centerpieces, I don't have a distinct example to give you guys like I did with the other ones. Um, but one thing I would say is when it does come to centerpieces, try to get something that matches the rest of your decor. Biggest tip I have for you guys, plan ahead when vendor shopping. Vendors change their prices every single year. The faster you get in, the better you're gonna get that rate that you want. If you decide you're planning your wedding the year of and you're trying to get vendor pricing like a couple months before your wedding, will you find them? Maybe, they might be fully booked by then. And another thing, their pricing might have gone up opposed to if you had booked them like a year prior. So I would highly suggest if you're trying to get the best vendor pricing, make sure you try to book way ahead. Uh, most vendors are not gonna accommodate you booking like two years ahead, but if you book that sweet spot of like a year ahead um, and it's just before down season time, so like downtime season, so like in the fall, I would try to hit them up in the fall or just before that, because usually engagement season, that's when those prices go up. So try to hit them like September. That's my, that's my thing. Um, so yeah, that is major, 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 major tip. Okay, next thing we're gonna talk about is cake alternatives. One thing people end up spending a lot of money on um, is their wedding cake. It's a tradition, you cut the cake together for the first time, but you don't always have to do it in a way where you have to get like a three tier cake and it costs you like hundreds of dollars. A few ways that I've seen done and a few, I also have some additional ideas for you guys is to do a cupcake tower. So once again, you can match the cupcakes to the theme of your wedding, um, 
the colors of your wedding. And another thing is you could have three different styles of cupcakes. So if someone doesn't like chocolate, they have something. If someone doesn't like vanilla and you know, a lot of people like red velvet. So you can kind of pick out what type of cupcakes you want and then everyone's kind of happy. Another kind of tower you could do is a donut tower, which is super cool. Or if you don't want to do a donut tower, you can do a donut wall, you know, glazed donuts and you've got a powdered donut, chocolate donuts, fudge donuts, whatever. Another thing that you could do as well that's pretty popular is macaroons. So you could do a macaroon tower and honestly, decor wise, this could look really cool. And once again, you can match it to the colors of your wedding. When everything kind of works cohesively together, it kind of gives the impression like you hired someone to do this, right? Because essentially when people, when it comes to decor, people are thinking about everything kind, kind of needs to fit into a theme or it needs to kind of follow a system. So just think about that when you're going when you're trying to plan and you're trying to make everything kind of click together if you are going to do a wedding cake i have two tips for you first thing is is to do pretty much have a two-tier cake and pretty much my advice there is the bottom tier have it be fake so the bottom tier won't actually be cake and then the top tier will be cake and the idea is is that when you go to take your wedding photo if you do want to do cake cutting at least you guys just cut into the top one but you don't cut into the bottom um, and then that way you guys can just take a piece from that. You save a bit of money when it comes to cake and it still looks like a two tier cake instead of just a one tier cake. The biggest tip I have when it comes to if you are going to do a wedding cake, make the wedding cake the dessert. People usually have like a three course meal and then they have dessert. The problem with that is by the time you get to dessert, one, people are full and two, um, you're spending a lot more money when it comes to having dessert as an addition to the menu on the menu. So my advice to you, make your wedding cake a part of the dessert menu. What you can do is by the time people get to that last course, aim your cake cutting for that time. By the time you do your cake cutting, they could, you could get the, uh, the hall to dish out that cake to the, uh, to the guest, and then they could have your wedding cake as a dessert. That way you're not taking a big cake home and it's sitting in your freezer for like 10 years taking up space. If you wanna have a three tier cake, by all means, go ahead. But I don't know, I just don't know if you're gonna eat all that. And most of the time when you cut the cake, people just wanna dance. They're not trying to eat no more, they're already full. So, I mean, if you're gonna get a three tier cake, just be prepared to eat a three tier cake or something. But uh, that's not me, I, ain't, I got sweet tooth, but it's not for cake. Okay, so my next tip for saving money at your wedding is get a dress you can afford to get dirty and a dress that you can dance in. So when it comes to your wedding, think about what kind of day you actually want to have. If you know you want to be out talking to people, moving around, dancing, like you want to be free moving, say you want to go got, want to go take photos by a waterfall, but you have to walk down a trail to get there. Like think about all that. And when you put all that into, into perspective, just try to get a dress that you can move around it and that you're not afraid to get dirty. You can always get a secondhand dress. I personally, I can't say personally, I'm not wearing a dress, but I would say you don't necessarily have to get a second hand, but just make sure you get a dress that you'll be comfortable in. So the next tip I'm going to give you guys is to keep a list of must haves and nice to haves and compromise wherever possible. So to some people having wedding photos is essential to some people having wedding a wedding video is essential. Um, for some people, it's having that three tier cake. Um, some people it's having lighting at a reception. Some people don't need that. Uh, some people it's, I gotta have a bomb bomb wedding venue or some bomb decor or very nice flowers everywhere. So you gotta decide what matters to you and spend the money there. If you want my opinion, a lot of the small detail, from a vid wedding videographer's perspective, a lot of the small details that you're gonna have at your wedding, you're not going to remember that. A lot of it is gonna go over your head and a lot of it is gonna go over your guest head. So for example, I had a couple who they had uh, wedding lights at their reception and they paid about $2,000 just to have wedding lights from the venue, you know, and they say they regret that because it's something none of the guests noticed and it didn't really make much of a difference when it came to their wedding. You gotta decide what matters to you most. Where I would say this is when your wedding is all done, the only thing you're gonna have left, aside from little details, is gonna be your wedding video and your wedding photos. Ideally, I would say spend your money there, but that sounds extremely biased coming from me. So talk to somebody if you can and ask them how they feel about their wedding film or their wedding photos and see what they say. The next thing we're gonna talk about is use Instagram and Pinterest 
to get inspiration and to also find your vendors. So not so much Pinterest, you can find vendors on Pinterest, but more importantly, most vendors are on Instagram. And honestly, when it comes to their Instagram feed, they always have examples of their work. So you can always find a lot of information, find a lot of vendors on Instagram, and you can find all their work kind of laid out there to kind of present it to you in a way that's very quick. And you can kind of just ingest it that way, opposed to having to dive into their website and go on click page here, click page there, or type in Google and you don't really get to see things at a quick glance. If you, wherever city you're in, say you're in Ottawa, so you type in Ottawa wedding videographer, and there will be people that come up um, because they should know if they're doing their SEO, right? You need to have the, the city name and their description. So you'll be able to find them very easily that way. So if you type in Ottawa wedding videographer, you'll find me. Pinterest, you'll find a lot of inspiration. So if, like the stuff I mentioned earlier, like a lot of the DIY stuff. And then if you're just trying to figure out ways to like for a theme for your wedding, Pinterest is a great place. On Pinterest, you can make little pins and you can make a board. If your partner wants to see like what's going on and how you guys are setting up your wedding and the whole thing, you can keep everything in one place and just make it all cohesive and easy to refer back to. Okay, so my other tip is to save on reception lights and ask your videographer if they have their own lights. So this might be, this is something that a lot of couples I speak to, this goes right over their head, but it's lighting. They think about the reception like, oh, you know, I want it to be intimate and dark and that's great, but that's all not always going to translate well for your wedding film and sometimes your wedding photos. When it comes to lighting, if you have a constant light on, it is easier for your photographer um, in a way, but it's way easier for your videographer. Now, with that said, a good videographer would be using lights. I can't say that I can't just hold it down to that and say if they're not using lights they're not good because not everyone's going to use lights for what they do. Some people shoot Sony where they have low light bodies, but really when it comes down to it, if you want that really cinematic look, I think you should be having lights. So if your wedding package at your venue comes with lighting, I would say definitely take it and use it and make sure that they know that you're serious about that because sometimes they'll say that and then they don't deliver on it or they don't have a technician there that even cares about how the lights look so they turn on just one setting when you paid for like the whole shebang and they don't even have that going down so make sure if you're going to pay for lights at a venue they do their job when it comes to that like don't they shouldn't be relying on like me the videographer to like run your lights because i would love to do that but i'm only one person so i gotta film i can't run lights so make sure if you're going to do lighting make sure you get the five star like the five star treatment and that they're actually going to have a technician on site who's running the lights whether it's a dj but just make sure you know you have all that figured out before you go dropping like two thousand dollars on some lighting with that said ask your videographer if they have their own lighting most of the time videographers will have lights they have either fresnel lights or led lights and one they look better on your skin a lot of the times when venues say they have lighting sometimes it's good and then other times um, if you are a person of color especially they have there's two types of lights so you have your standard like orange type light uh, those are tungsten light then you have fluorescent lights those are your white lights so a lot of the venues they have fluorescent lights in the ceiling and those do not look good on skin on if you're a person of color it does not look good on skin tones so my advice to you if your wedding videographer has lighting ask them if they have what kind of lighting they have and if they're daylight lighting um, what color temperature they are they will know what I'm talking about but make sure you ask them if their lighting is going to look good on you so that way you can decide oh do I want to do I want to have good lighting from the venue or am I going to get some lighting from your video from the videographer if I had to make sense of this for, for you from a technical from a non-technical standpoint if the lighting's too orange you're going to look like an Oompa Loompa if the lighting's too blue you're going to look really flat and you'll almost blend into your dress or your videographer or photographer is going to be doing a lot of color correcting to make you guys look good and you want that stuff to look great out of camera if i had to say what you should do i don't think wedding venues pay attention to lighting as much as i think they should so i would ask your videographer if they have lighting because if anything they will take care of you when it comes to lighting because if they have garbage lighting on you uh, then that really affects them that affects their portfolio and they're not going to make more work for themselves they're not going to buy lighting that looks like crap so that's why i would say uh look into that another big tip comes from my brides is review your guest list 
and have a solid RSVP date. The big glaring thing that I keep hearing is invite people, invite the people who you want at your wedding. Do not invite people that you just feel obligated to invite. What's gonna end, uh, I had a bride who actually personal messaged me, she DM'd me this and she said pretty much, she had a situation where she invited 10 people, 10 people canceled on her the night before her wedding and that's a, it was at $160 per plate. So they ended up being out $1,600 a night before their wedding. That is awful guys. You don't wanna be thinking about that the night before your wedding. Invite people that you want there, invite people you know are gonna be there to support you and who are not gonna leave you high and dry. And that goes to the point that I'm making now. If you have a solid RSVP date, there's gonna be no surprises about who's there, who's not there. And when you have to make your final payment for your venue, you know who you're paying for and you know who's gonna show up. Yes, things will come up, maybe one or two people something happened but you just want to make sure that you limit the amount of people that are just going to cancel out on you out of the blue like that because being out like two grand the night before your wedding that's a bit much to take in like you could have put that money towards something else a videographer you know certain decor that you wanted that kind of thing right so something to think about okay this one is totally up to interpretation but a bride sent me this and i thought i needed to say it don't let people tell you what is important at your wedding and put your money to what you want. So I know there's a lot of brides who have mothers who they almost get very involved with the wedding and they want to kind of make suggestions here and there. Stop and think. It's your day. Yes, you can take tips here and there, but you also want it to be about what you want as well. So if you want a videographer, get a videographer. Wedding films have changed since 1985. So your parents' perception on what a wedding film looks like in 2020 may be very different. Do your own research, decide what you want, put the money where you think would be best. And I'm speaking from a videographer standpoint, I've had brides that regretted not hiring me and they put more money into something else when they wish they had a wedding film in the end. So something to think about. The biggest tip I have, this is a perfect uh, transition one, gain trusted vendor sources um, and if you can gain them from friends. So the best thing to do is to talk. If you have friends that have been married, try talking to them, ask them where they got their vendors from, that kind of thing. Because the worst thing you can do is get vendors who are not credible, don't have any reviews. You can't find them online. If you're gonna hire someone, make sure you know a lot about them before you go and hire them. You wanna know when you're gonna get your wedding video, when you're gonna get your pictures, that kind of thing. I've had brides who, um, and this is one photographer I'm actually talking about, I'm not going to name drop them, but uh, I had three instances where brides, I worked with him, they worked with, they uh, got him to do their wedding photos and they didn't get their wedding photos for two years. And it wasn't until I messaged that they got their wedding photos from one of them. So that's what I would say is make sure you know when you're gonna get your photos and your video. Make sure that this person is a credible person, um, that you're not just gonna be upset in the end. You wanna make sure whoever you're hiring is going to take care of you. With that said, make sure you do your own research. Don't just think like, oh, they seem cool on the phone. Search them up on Google. If you can't find them on Google, there's probably a reason why you cannot find them on Google. Any verified legit business is probably gonna be on Google. If you can't find them, it's probably because they don't wanna be found. And that's never a good sign if you ask me. Check that out. Shade. I'm throwing shade, hella shade. So another tip I have is to pass on the limo. When it comes to your wedding, you get a limo. When do you usually, when are you usually in the limo? You're in the limo at two parts of the day. First time you're in the limo is from the get ready to the ceremony. During that time, you're high nerves. You're thinking about the ceremony. It's not worth it. You're gonna spend a lot of money to have a limo. And depending on what limo driver you get there, you're usually just like time, 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 because they got other weddings to do. My advice to you, honestly, I'm just saying from experience, get a mode of transportation where you can pretty much be rest assured that you're in control of when it leaves and you're not having someone wait on you and you're trying to rush out the door. Like if you're late, running late for your wedding, the last thing you want to worry about is a limo driver outside who's stressing you that, oh, I got a wedding in like an hour and I got to drive you like right now. Like things are going to happen on your wedding day and 
you don't want to be dealing with that limo driver because honestly some of them are not very considerate of the fact that it's your wedding day and you're already nerves nerves are there so it's like if my thing is if you're not going to be helpful like what's the deal bro things go behind things are going to happen on the day and the last thing you need is your limo driver harassing you because he has to make another wedding in like two hours things are going to happen on the wedding day so you need buffer time and if your limo driver doesn't give himself buffer time i don't know what he's doing that's that a random tip that i have this is not a sponsored video but one thing i would look into is when you're buying a ring try to explore other avenues of buying a ring so try buying a ring online i know one site that does it is jamesisland.com someone a friend of mine had told me that they did it i can't speak on their service entirely just because obviously i haven't done it um but i would say look into buying a ring online this way when you look at the rings online they end up being usually they end up being a lot cheaper um so i'll look into that and see if that's an option you want to pursue so thank you guys for watching this video i hope you guys were able to take something away from everything i said i like i said again i'm going to be dropping more videos like this just helping out my brides um and my groomsmen uh, just with tips and tricks for you guys in wedding planning process um, and if you guys, if there's anything you guys would like to see, let me know that as well. Thank you for watching and happy wedding planning. Made it.